Howdy, folks. The name of this poem is Savagery. The author is Sri Aurobindo. This is Canto One, The Symbol Dawn. This is the beginning of the poem. It was the hour before the gods awake. Across the path of the divine event, the huge foreboding mind of night, alone in her unlit temple of eternity, lay stretched immobile upon silence's marge. Almost one felt opaque, impenetrable, in the somber symbol of her eyeless muse, the abysm of the unbodied infinite. A fathomless zero occupied the world, a power of fallen boundlessness self-awake between the first and last nothingness, recalling the tenebrous womb from which it came, turned from the insoluble mystery of birth and the tardy process of mortality, and longed to reach its end in vacant naught. As in a dark beginning of all things, a mute featureless semblance of the unknown. Repeating forever the unconscious act, prolonging forever the unseeing will, cradled the cosmic drowse of ignorant force, whose moved creative slumber kindles the suns and carries our lives in its somnambulous whirl athwart the vain, enormous trance of space, its formless stupor without mind or life, a shadow spinning through a soulless void, thrown back once more into unthinking dreams, earth wheeled abandoned in the hollow gulfs, forgetful of her spirit and her fate. The impassive skies were neutral, empty, still, then something in the inscrutable darkness stirred, a nameless movement, an unthought idea. Insistent, dissatisfied, without an aim, something that wished but knew not how to be, teased the unconscient to wake ignorance. A thrill that came and left a quivering trace, gave room for an old tired want unfilled at peace in its subconscious moonless cave, to raise its head and look for absent light, straining closed eyes of vanished memory, like one who searches for a bygone self and only meets the corpse of his desire. It was as though even in this knot's profound, even in this ultimate disillusion's core, there lurked an unremembering entity survivor of a slain and buried past, condemned to resume the effort and the pang, reviving in another frustrate world. An unshaped consciousness desired light, and a blank prescience yearned toward distant change, as if a childlike finger laid on a cheek, reminded of the endless need in things the heedless mother of the universe, an infant longing clutched the somber vast. Insensibly somewhere a breach began, a long lone line of hesitating hue, like a vague smile tempting a desert heart, troubled the far rim of life's obscure sleep, arrived from the other side of boundlessness, an eye of deity poured, peered through the dumb deeps, a scout in a reconnaissance from the sun. It seemed amid a heavy cosmic rest, the torpor of a sick and weary world, to seek for a spirit soul and desolate, too fallen to recollect forgotten bliss. Intervening in a mindless universe, its message crept through the reluctant hush, calling the adventure of consciousness and joy. And, conquering nature's disillusioned breast, compelled renewed consent to see and feel. A thought was sown in the unsounded void. A sense was born within the darkness's depths. A, 
a memory quivered in the heart of time, as if a soul long dead were moved to live. But the oblivion that succeeds the fall had blotted the crowded tablets of the past, and all that was destroyed must be rebuilt, and old experience labored out once more. All can be done if the God touches there. A hope stole in that hardly dared to be amid the night's forlorn indifference, as if solicited in an alien world, with timid and hazardous instinctive grace, orphaned and driven out to seek a home, an errant marble with no place to live. Into a far-off nook of heaven there came a slow, miraculous gesture's dim appeal. The persistent thrill of a transfiguring touch persuaded the inert black quietude, and beauty and wonder disturbed the fields of God. A wandering hand of pale, enchanted light that glowed along a fading moment's brink, fixed with gold panel and opalescent hinge, a gate of dream ajar on mystery's verge. One lucent corner windowing hidden things forced the world's blind immensity to sight. The darkness failed and slipped like a falling cloak from the reclining body of a god. Then through the pallid rift that seemed at first hardly enough for a trickle from the suns, out poured the revelation and the flame. The brief perpetual sign recurred above, a glamour from unreached transcendences, iridescent with the glory of the unseen. A message from the unknown immortal light, ablaze upon creation's quivering edge. Dawn built her aura of magnificent hues and buried its seed of grandeur in the hours. An instance visitor the God had shown. On life's thin border a while the vision stood and bent over earth's pondering forehead curve, interpreting a recondite beauty and bliss in colors hieroglyphs of mystic sense, it wrote the lines of a significant myth, telling of a greatness of spiritual dawns. A brilliant code penned with the sky for page. Almost that day the epiphany was disclosed, of which our thoughts and hopes are signal flares. A lonely splendor from the invisible goal almost was flung upon the opaque inane. Once more a tread perturbed the vacant vasts. Infinity sensor, center, a face of rapturous calm, parted the eternal lids that open heaven. A form from far beatitude seemed to near, ambassadorist, twixt, frames being dropped, an ambassadorist twixt eternity and change, the omniscient goddess leaned across the breadths that wrapped the faded journeyings of the stars and saw the spaces ready for her feet. Once she half looked behind her veiled sun, then, thoughtful, went to her immortal work. Earth felt the imperishable's passage close. The waking ear of nature heard her steps and wideness turned to her its limitless eye, and, scattered on the sealed depths, her luminous smile kindled to fire the silence of the worlds. All grew a consecration and a rite. There was a vibrant link between earth and heaven. The wide-winged hymn of a great priestly wind arose and failed upon the altar hills. The high bows prayed in a re Veiling sky. Here, where our half-lit ignorance skirts the gulfs, on the dumb bosom of the ambiguous earth, here where one knows not even the step in front, and truth has her throne on the shadowy back of doubt, on this anguished and precarious field of toil, outspread between some large and different gaze, 
impartial witness of our joy and bail, our prostate soil bore the awakening ray. Here too the vision and prophetic gleam lit into miracles common and meaningless shapes. Then the divine afflatus spent, withdrew, unwanted, fading from the mortal's range. A sacred yearning lingered in its trace, the worship of a presence and a power too perfect to be held by death-bound hearts, the prescience of a marvelous birth to come. Only a little the godlight can stay, spiritual beauty illumining human sight, lines with its passion and mystery matters mask. and squanders eternity on a beat of time. As when a dr soul draws near the sill of birth, adjoining mortal time to timelessness, a spark of deity lost in matter's crypt, its luster vanishes in the inconscient plains, that transitory glow of magic fire, so now dissolved in bright accustomed air. The message ceased and waned the messenger. The single call, the uncompanioned power, drew back into some far-off secret world, the hue and marvel of the supernal beam. She looked no more on our mortality. The excess of beauty natural to Godkind could not uphold its claim on time-born eyes. Too mystic real for space tenancy, her body of glory was expunged from heaven. The rarity and wonder lived no more. There was the common light of earthly day, a franchise from the respite of fatigue. Once more the rumors of the speed of life pursued the cycles of her blinded quest. All sprang to their unvarying daily acts. The thousand peoples of the soil and tree obeyed the unforeseeing instant's urge, and, leader here with his uncertain mind, alone who stares at the future's covered face, man lifted up the burden of his fate. And savagery too awoke among these tribes that hastened to join the brilliant summoner's chant, and, lured by the beauty of the apparent ways, acclaim their portion of ephemeral joy. Akin to the eternity, once she, the eternity once she came, no part she took in this small happiness. A mighty stranger in the human field, the embodied guest within made no response. The call that wakes the leap of human mind, its checkered e eager motion of pursuit, its fluttering-hued illusion of desire visited her heart like a sweet alien note. Time's message of brief light was not for her. In her was the anguish of the gods. Imprisoned in our transient human mold, the deathless conquered by the death of things. A vaster nature's joy had once been hers, but long could keep not its gold heavenly hue or stand upon this brittle earthly base, a narrow movement of on time's deep abysm. Life's fragile littleness denied the power, the proud and conscious wideness and the bliss she had brought with her into the human form, the calm delight that weds one soul to all, the key to the flaming doors of ecstasy. Earth's grain that needs the sap of pleasure and tears rejected the undying rapture's boon. Offered to the daughter of infinity, her passion flower of love and doom she gave. In vain now seemed that splendid sacrifice. A prodigal of her rich divinity, herself and all she was she had lent to men, hoping her greater being to implant and in their bodies' lives acclimatized that heaven might native grow on mortal soil. 
Hard it is to persuade earth nature's change. Mortality bears ill the eternal's touch. It fears the pure divine intolerance and that assault of ether and of fire. It murmurs at its sorrowless happiness. Almost with hate repels the light it brings. It trembles at its naked power of truth and the might and sweetness of its absolute voice. Inflicting on the heights the abysm's law, it sullies with its mire heaven's messengers. Its thorns of fallen nature are the defense it turns against the Savior hands of grace. It meets the sons of God with death and, death and pain, a glory of lightnings traversing the earth scene, their sun thoughts fading, darkened by ignorant minds, their work betrayed, their good to evil turned, the cross their payment for the crown they gave. Only they leave behind a splendid name. A fire has come and touched men's hearts and gone. A few have caught flame and risen to greater life. Too unlike the world she came to help and save, her greatness weighed upon its ignorant breast, and from its dim chasms welled a dire return, a portion of its sorrow, struggle, fall. To live with grief, to confront death on her road, the mortal's lot became the immortal's share. Thus trapped in the gin of earthly desire, destinies, the, awaiting her ordeal's hour abode, outcast from her inborn felicity, accepting life's obscure terrestrial robe, hiding herself even from those she loved, the Godhead greater by a human fate. A dark foreknowledge separated her from all of whom she was the star and stay, too great to impart the peril and the pain, in her torn depths she kept the grief to come, as one who, watching over men left blind, takes up the load of an unwitting race, harboring a foe whom with her heart she must feed, unknown her act, unknown the doom she faced, unhelped she must foresee and dread and dare. The long foreknown and Fatal morn was here, bringing a noon that seemed like every other noon. For nature walks upon her mighty way, unheeding when she breaks a soul, a life. Leaving her slain behind, she travels on. Man only marks on God's all-seeing eyes. Even in this moment of her soul's despair, even in its grim rendezvous with death and fear, no cry broke from her lips, no call for aid. She told the secret of her woe to none. Calm was her face and courage kept her mute. Yet only her outward self suffered and strove. Even her humanity was half divine. Her spirit opened to the spirit in all. Her nature felt all nature as its own. Apart, living within, all lives she bore. Aloof, she carried in herself the world. Her dread was one with the great cosmic dread. Her strength was founded on the cosmic might. The universal mother's love was hers. Against the evil at life's afflicted roots, Her own calamity, its private sign, of her pangs she made a mystic, poignant sword. A solitary mind, a worldwide heart, to the lone immortal's unshared work she rose. At first life grieved not in her burdened breast, on the lap of earth's original somnolence, inert, released into forgetfulness. Somnolence. Prone it reposed, unconscious on mind's verge, obtuse and tranquil like the stone and star. In a deep cleft of silence, twixt two realms, she lay remote from grief, unsawn by care, nothing recalling of the sorrow here. Then a slow fate remembrance, shadow-like, moved, and sighing, she laid her hand upon her bosom 
and recognize the close and lingering ache. Deep, quiet, old, made natural to its place, but knew why it but knew not why it was there, nor whence it came. The power that kindles mine was still withdrawn. Heavy, unwilling were life's servitors. Like, like workers with no wages of delight, sullen the torch of sense refused to burn. The unassisted brain found not its past. Only a vague earth nature held the frame. But now she stirred, her life shared the cosmic load. At the summons of her body's voiceless call, her strong, far-winging spirit traveled back. Back to the yoke of ignorance and fate. Back to the labor and stress of mortal days. Lighting a pathway through strange symbol dreams across the ebbing of the seas of sleep. Her house of nature felt an uneasy sway, illumined swiftly were life's darkened rooms, and memory's casements opened on the hours, and the tired feet of thought approached her doors. All came back to her, earth and love and doom, the ancient disputants encircled her, like giant figures wrestling in the night. The godheads from the dim inconscient born awoke to struggle in the pang divine, and in the, and in the shadow of her flaming heart, at the somber center of the dire debate, a guardian of the unconsoled abyss, inheriting the long agony of the globe, a stone still figure of high and godlike pain, stared into space with fixed regardless eyes that saw grief's timeless depths but not life's goal. Afflicted by his harsh divinity, bound to his throne, he waited unappeased the daily oblation of her unwept tears. All the fierce questions of man's hours relived. The sacrifice of suffering and desire earth offers to the immortal ecstasy began again beneath the eternal hand. Awake she endured the moment's serried march and looked on this green, smiling, dangerous world and heard the ignorant cry of living things. Amid the trivial sounds, the unchanging scene, her soul arose confronting time and fate. Immobile in herself, she gathered force this was the day that Satyavan must die. This is the end of Canto 1. I apologize for the mistakes. Canto 2, The Issue A while, withdrawn in secret fields of thought, her mind moved in a many-imaged past that lived again and saw its end approach. Dying, it lived imperishably in her, Transient and vanishing from transient eyes, invisible, a fateful ghost of self, it bore the future on its phantom breast. Along the fleeting events far backward trail, regressed the stream of the ins insistent hours, and on the bank of the mysterious flood, peopled with well-loved forms now seen no more, and the subtle images of things that were, her witness spirit stood reviewing time. All that she once had hoped and dreamed and been flew past her eagle-winged through memory skies. As in a many-hued flaming inner dawn, her life's broad highways and its sweet bypaths lay mapped to her sun-clear recording view. From the bright country of her childhood days, and the blue mountains of her soaring youth, and the paradise groves and peacock wings of love, to joy clutched under the silent shadow of doom, in a last turn where heaven raced with hell. Twelve passionate months lay, led in a day of fate, 
An absolute supernatural darkness falls on man sometimes when he draws near to God. An hour arrives when fail all nature's means, forced out from the protecting ignorance and flung back on his naked primal need. He at length must cast from him his surface soul and be the ungarbed entity within. Sorry about that noise. That hour had fallen now on savagery, a point she had reached where life must be in vain, or in her unborn element awake, her will must cancel her body's destiny. For only the unborn spirit's timeless power can lift the yoke imposed by birth in time. Only the self that builds this figure of self can raise the fixed interminable line that joins these changing names, these numberless lives, these new oblivious personalities, and keeps still lurking in our conscious acts, the trail of old forgotten thoughts and deeds. Disown the legacy of our buried selves, the burdensome airship to our vanished forms, accepted blindly by the body and soul. An episode in an unremembered tale its beginning lost, its motive and plot concealed. A once living story has prepared and made our present fate, child of past energies. The fixity of the cosmic sequences, fastened with hidden inevitable links, she must disrupt, dislodge by her soul's force, her past, a block on the immortal's road, Make her raise ground and shape anew her fate. A colloquy of the original gods, meeting upon the borders of the unknown. Her soul's debate with embodied nothingness must be rustled out on a dangerous, dim background. Her being must confront its formless cause. Against the universe weigh its single self. On the bare peak where self is alone with naught, and life has no sense and love no place to stand, she must plead her case upon extinction's verge. In the world's death cave uphold life's helpless claim and vindicate her right to be and love. Altered must be nature's harsh economy. Acquittance she must win from her past bond an old account of suffering exhaust. Strike out from time the soul's long compound debt and the heavy servitudes of the karmic gods, the slow revenge of unforgiving law and the deep need of universal pain and hard sacrifice and tragic consequence. Out of a timeless barrier she must break, penetrate with her thinking depths the void's monstrous hush Look into the lonely eyes of immortal death, and with her nude spirit measure the infinite's night. A great and dolorous moment was now close, a mailed battalion marching to its doom. The last long days went by with heavy tramp, long but too soon to pass, too near the end. Alone amid the many faces loved, aware among unknowing happy hearts, her Armored spirit kept watch upon the hours, listening to a foreseen tremendous step, listening for a foreseen tremendous step. In the closed beauty of the inhuman wilds, a combatant in silent dreadful lists, the world unknowing for the world she stood, no helper had she to save the strength within, there was no witness of terrestrial eyes. The gods above and nature's soul below were the spectators of that mighty strife. Around her were the austere sky-pointing hills and the green murmurous, broad, deep thudded woods muttered incessantly their muffled spell. A dense, magnificent, colored, self-wrapped life draped in the leaves' vivid emerald monotone and set with checkered sunbeams and blithe flowers, immured her destiny's secluded scene. There had she grown to the stature of her spirit, 
the genius of titanic silences, steeping her soul in its wide loneliness, had shown to her herself's bare reality and mated her with her environment. Its solitude greatened her human hours with a background of the eternal and unique. A force of spare direct necessity reduced the heavy framework of man's days and his overburdening mass of outward needs to a first thin strip of simple animal wants and the mighty wildness of the primitive earth and the brooding multitude of patient trees and the musing sapphire leisure of the sky and the solemn weight of the slow-passing months had left in her deep room for thought and God. There was her drama's radiant prologue lived. A spot for the eternal's tread on earth sat in the cloistral yearning of the woods and watched by the aspiration of the peaks appeared through an oriate opening in time where stillness listening felt the unspoken word. And the hours forgot to pass towards grief and change. Here with the suddenness divine advents have, repeating the marvel of the first descent, changing to rapture the dull earthly round, love came to her hiding the shadow, death. Well might he find in her his perfect shrine, since first the earth being's heavenward growth began through all the long ordeal of the race. Never a rare creature bore his shaft, that burning test of the Godhead in our parts, a lightning from the heights on our abyss. All in her pointed to a nobler kind, near to earth's wideness, intimate with heaven, Exalted and swift, her young, large vision spirit, voyaging through worlds of splendor and of calm, overflew the ways of thought to unborn things. Ardent was her self-poised, unstumbling will. Her mind, a sea of white sincerity, passionate in flow, had not one turpid wave as in a mystic and dynamic dance, a priestess of immaculate ecstasies, inspired and ruled from truth's revealing vault, moves in some prophet cavern of the gods, a heart of silence in the hands of joy, inhabited with rich creative beats, a body like a parable of dawn, that seemed a niche for veiled divinity, or golden temple door to things beyond. Immortal rhythm swayed in her time-born steps. Her look, her smile, awoke celestial sense even in earth stuff, and their intimate delight poured a supernal beauty on men's lives. A wide self-giving was her native act, a magnanimity as of sea or sky, enveloped with its greatness all that came and gave a sense as of a greatened world. <coughs> and gave a sense as of a greatened world. Sorry about that. Her kindly care was a sweet temperate sun, her high passion a blue heaven's equipoise, as might a soul fly like a hunted bird, escaping with tired wings from a world of storms, and a quiet reach like a remembered breast, in a haven of safety and splendid soft repose. One could drink life back in streams of honey fire, recover the lost habit of happiness, feel her bright nature's glorious ambience, and preen joy in her warmth and color's rule. A deep of compassion, a hushed sanctuary, her inward help unbarred a gate in heaven. Love in her was wider than the universe, the whole world could take refuge in her single heart. The great unsatisfied Godhead here could dwell. Vacant of the dwarf self's imprisoned air, her mood could harbor her sublimer breath. Spiritual that can make all things divine. For even her gulfs were secrecies of light. 
At once she was the stillness and the word, a continent of self-diffusing peace, an ocean of trembling, of untrembling virgin fire. The strength, the silence of the gods were hers. In her he found a vastness like his own, his high, warm, subtle ether he refound, and moved in her as in his natural home. In her he met his own eternity. Till then no mournful line had barred this ray. On the frail breast of this precarious earth, since her orb sight in its breath-fastened house, opened in sympathy with happier stars, where life is not exposed to sorrowful change, remembered beauty death-claimed lids ignore, and wondered at this world of fragile fate carried on camera strips of shimmering time and wondered at this world of fragile forms carried on canvas strips of shimmering time the impunity of unborn mites was hers although she leaned to bear the human load her walk kept still the measures of the gods earth's breath had failed to stain that brilliant glass Unsmeared with the dust of our mortal atmosphere, it still reflected heaven's spiritual joy. Almost they saw who lived within her light, her playmate in the sepaternal spheres, spheres, descended from its unattainable realms, in her attracting advent's luminous wake, the white fire dragon bird of endless bliss, drifting with burning wings above her days. Heaven's tranquil shield guarded the missioned child. A glowing orbit was her early term, years like gold raiment of the gods that pass, but youth sat throned in calm felicity. But joy cannot endure until the end. Oh, her youth sat throned in calm felicity, but joy cannot endure until the end. There is, a, there is a darkness in terrestrial things that will not suffer too long glad a note, will not suffer long too glad a note. On her too closed the inescapable hand, the armed immortal bore the snare of time, one dealt with her who meets the burden great, a signer of the ordeal and the path, who chooses in this holocaust of the soul, death, fall, and sorrow as the spirit's goads. The dubious godhead with his torch of pain lit up the chasm of the unfinished world and called her to fill with her vast self the abyss. August and pitiless in the, his calm outlook, heightening the eternal's dreadful strategy, he measured the difficulty with the might and dug more deep the gulf that almost cross. Assailing her divinest elements, he made her heart kin to the striving human heart, and forced her strength to its appointed end, for this she had accepted mortal breath. And forced her strength to its appointed road, for this she had accepted mortal breath. To wrestle with the shadow she had come, and must confront the riddle of man's birth, and life's brief struggle in dumb matter's night, whether to bear with ignorance and death, or hew the ways of immortality, to win or lose the godlike game for man, was her soul's issue thrown with destiny's dice. But not to submit and suffer was she born, to lead, to deliver was her glorious part. Here was no fabric of terrestrial make, fit for a day's use by busy, careless powers. An image fluttering on the screen of fate, half animated for a passing show, or a castaway on the ocean of desire, flung to the eddies in a ruthless sport, and tossed along the gulfs of circumstance, a creature born to bend beneath the yoke. A chattel and a plaything on of time's lords, or one more pawn who comes destined to be pushed, one slow move forward on a measureless board, 
and the chess play of the earth soul with doom. Such is the human figure drawn by time. A conscious frame was here, a self-born force. In this enigma of the dusk of God, the slow and strange uneasy compromise of limiting nature with a limitless soul, where all must move, be, where all must move between an ordered chance and an uncaring blind necessity. Too high the fire spiritual dare not blaze. If once it met the intense original flame, an answering touch might shatter all measures made, and earth sink down with the weight of the infinite. A jail in this immense material world. Across each road stands armed a stone-eyed law. At every gate, huge dim sentinels pace, a grave tribunal of the ignorance. An inquisition of the priests of night, in judgment sit on the adventurer's soul. And the dual tables and the karmic norm restrain the titan in us and the god. Pain with its lash, joy with its silver bribe, guard the wheel's circling immobility. A bond is put on the high-climbing mind, a seal on the too large, wide-open heart. Death stays the journeying discoverer, life. Thus is the throne of the unconscious safe while the tardy coilings of the aeons pass and the animal browses in the sacred fence and the gold hawk can cross the skies no more. But one stood up and lit the limitless flame, arraigned by the dark power that hates all bliss in the dire court where life must pay for joy, sentenced by the mechanic justicer, To the afflicting penalty of man's hopes, her head she bowed not to the stark decree, barring her helpless heart to destiny strokes, bearing her helpless heart to destiny strokes. So bows and must the mind-born will in man, obedient to the statutes fixed of old, admitting without peel the nether gods. In her the superhuman cast its seed, Inapt to fold its mighty wings of dream, her spirit refused to hug the common soil. Or, finding all life's golden meanings robbed, compound with earth, struck from the starry list, or quench with black despair the God-given light. Accustomed to the eternal and the true, her being conscious of its divine founts, ask not from mortal frailty pain's relief. Patch not with failure, bargain, or compromise. A work she had to do, a word to speak, writing the unfinished story of her soul in thoughts and actions graved in nature's book. She accepted not to close the luminous page, cancel her commerce with, an, commerce with eternity, or set a signature of weak ascent to the brute balance of the world's exchange. A force in her that toiled since the earth was made, accomplishing in life the great world plan, pursuing, pursuing after death immortal aims, repugnant to admit frustration's barren role, forfeit the meaning of her birth in time, obey the government of the casual fact, or yield her high destiny up to passing chance. In her own self she found her high recourse. She, matched, she matched with the iron law her sovereign right. Her single will opposed the cosmic rule. To stay the wheels of doom this greatness rose. At the unseen's knock upon her hidden gates, her strength made greater by the lightning's touch. awoke from slumber in her heart's recess. It bore the stroke of that which kills and saves. Across the awful march no eye can see, 
bearing its dreadful route no will can change. She faced the engines of the universe. A heart stood in the way of the driving wheels. Its giant workings paused in front of a mind. Its stark conventions met the flame of a soul. A magic leverage suddenly is caught that moves the veiled ineffable's timeless will. A prayer, a master act, a king idea can link man's strength to a transcendent force. Then miracle has made the common rule. One mighty deed can change the course of things. A lonely thought becomes omnipotent. All now seems nature's massed machinery, an endless servitor, servitude to material rule, and long determination to rigid chain. Her, her firm and changeless habits aping law, her empire of unconscious death device, annul the claim of man's free human will. He too is a machine amid machines. A piston brain pumps out the shapes of thought. A beating heart cuts out emotions and modes. An insentient energy fabricates a soul. Or the figure of the world reveals the signs of a tied chance repeating her old steps in circles around matter's binding posts. A random series of inept events to which reason lends elusive sense is here, or the empiric life's instinctive search, or a vast ignorant mind's colossal work. But wisdom comes, and vision grows within. Then nature's instruments, nature's instrument crowns himself her king. He feels his witnessing self and conscious power. His soul steps back and sees the light supreme. A godhead stands behind the brute machine. This truth broke in in a triumph of fire. A victory was won for God in man. The deity revealed its hidden face. The great world mother now in her arose. A living choice reversed fate's cold dead turn affirm the spirit's tread on circumstance, pressed back the senseless dire revolving wheel, and stopped the mute march of necessity. A flaming warrior from the eternal peaks, empowered to force the door denied and closed, smote from death's visage its dumb absolute, and burst the bounds of consciousness and time. That is the end of Canto 2. And I did not promise to make a perfect recording, just a good one.